welcome to all of you for tuning in to this episode of Into the Archives. If you've missed our previous episodes, scroll down our Facebook page or check our YouTube channel for those videos. This week, our featured object is a small tin petticoat lamp donated by Albert Nolt in 1952. He was the third president of the Old Slater Mill Association, which was founded in 1921, with much of his term taking place through the 1950s. At that time, the association was working on establishing the Slater Mill as a museum, and under the curatorship of Daniel Tower, that became a reality. Because of this, many of the objects contained in the archives are from the 1950s. The reason why this object is called a petticoat lamp is a bit self-explanatory if you look at its shape. The bottom half of the lamp looks like a little metal skirt. The top half is rounded, and the curved handle comes out of the top half lip to connect to the bottom of the lamp. The top part also has three small metal cylinders where the wick is threaded, and a little chimney of sorts poking out from the side above the handle so that any smoke could escape. If you turn the lamp upside down, the skirt portion is hollow with a cylinder inside. The entire lamp is made of tin, painted black. However, some paint loss has occurred over the years. Traditionally, petticoat lamps were replacements for candles as a light source, using whale oil. The lamp here is also a type of peg lamp, since the cylinder inside the petticoat is meant to go over a candlestick and hold the lamp steady. Since this is a type of oil lamp, it doesn't give off a very bright light, but it is a bit safer than using an open flame. Prior to the Civil War, lasting from 1861 to 1865, the most popular lamp fuel was called camphene, made of turpentine, alcohol, and camphor oil for scent. This would be a cheap way to light your home, but also a dangerous one, since the camphene could explode. Before the invention of light bulbs and lamps as we know them, lamp design was largely based on what type of fuel they used in order to maximize light output. Rapeseed oil, lard, and whale oil were very common fuels, as well as camphene. By 1850, the U.S. Patent Office records nearly 250 different patents for lamps, burners, wicks, and fuels. This petticoat lamp is made from tin plate, which is sheet iron coated with tin and rolled out thin and flat. Tin smiths work mainly with their metals cold, rather than heating them up like a blacksmith would. Occasionally, they will heat the metal to make it easier to shape. Tin smiths have been working their trade in America since 1720 but the British Iron Act of 1750 affected production due to the prohibition of building new rolling mills, which meant that there could be no new tin plate works in America. This changed after the American Revolution and products made of tin plate became widely available. That's lit for this week's video. Glad I could shed some light on this subject. I hope you tune in to our next episode, check our Facebook page and our YouTube channel next Monday for an object that's worth celebrating. Until next time!